Good, so then let's look at label shift. Label shift is kind of a simplified case of this. So let's say this is our training set and our test set looks like so. So it turns out that we have a lot more cats in our test set than in our training set. Right. Uh, so this is a bit different from just simple covariate shift. And it's something that's actually rather more common. Right, so why would you ever do this? Well, um, let's say I use some medical diagnostic tool and I train it on a few sick patients. Let's say I have maybe 50-50 sick and healthy patients. Um, and then I deploy this in a practice. Let's say I have a breast ca cancer you know, test and you know, 50-50 split for training. I deploy it in practice and it turns out that fortunately breast cancer is a lot more rare than what I would have actually imagined. So very few people are actually really sick. And then you, know, you need to intuitively, as you can see, downweight things such that you know, that is corrected for. Or I test on data during flu season where you know, you know, flu is a lot more common and then you know, my test should take care of this. Or for instance, for speech recognition, this is a very common thing. So let's say I build a speech recognizer. And then, you know, I built this maybe before, before an election and then I have an election and all of a sudden there are new names, new topics and discussions. They still speak the same language, but all of a sudden they, you know, speak about walls rather than healthcare and people have weird names and uh, weird hair. And uh, so your speech recognizer, well, okay, forget the hair, but for the rest, it may not work so well anymore because you now have a different distribution over what gets you know, translated. Or you have some movie star with a weird name who all of a sudden gets popular. So then your speech recognizer needs to adjust to this. Otherwise, you're just consistently going to get this wrong. And so if you look at what's going on in the math, you have a slightly different setting. So rather than assuming that P of Y given X is the same, you know, now assume that P of X given Y is the same, but that rather than P of Y, you have Q of Y. So stuff like that can, for instance, happen if you assume that Y is actually causal for X. So if the flu causes the symptoms rather than the symptoms causing the flu, and then if all of a sudden you have more flu, well then, that happens. So now you need to reweight things according to the ratio of the labels. Before that, for comparative correction, we were kind of got lucky, right? I mean, we actually have the data sets around. But you don't really have the test labels around anymore. <clears throat> so that's pretty inconvenient, right? So what you could do is you want to estimate you want to measure you know, how well the estimates do on the test set. And it turns out that all you need is just to assume that your error confusion matrix remains unchanged. This is a slightly advanced topic. I mean, you can read the corresponding paper for that, but the algebra behind it is actually fairly simple. You go and look at the error confusion matrix. And you look at basically you know, what the predictions on the training set are. You look at the corresponding error confusion, you look at the corresponding label predictions on the test set. These are not the true labels, but they are the predictions. Now if, let's say, on the training set, I predict, you know, 10% people with flu and 90% healthy, and on the test set, I predict 40% with flu and, you know, 60% healthy, I can infer from that that probably something must have happened. Now if I use my error confusion matrix, then I have to assume that it's invertible. That's basically, you know, if I have the flu, what are the chances that I'll say I have the flu or that I'm healthy? Then you can invert that matrix and work out exactly what the probabilities are. And based on that, you're essentially in good shape. Um, so this is really just a quick aside. Don't worry about the details there, but this is just for you to let you know that besides covariate shift, there are also other related problems that look and feel very similar, but well, aren't quite the same. 
Yeah, so just, of course you test it and it works and yeah, whatever. That's fine.